<clears throat> Howdy, Brother Roy here. I am at Johnson's Grove Baptist Church in South Fulton, Tennessee. Um, that's a place where they have a little Bible Institute. That's Fish and Grace Bible Institute. And so uh, I'm staying here at the church and they were kind enough to let me use their facilities. So I'm gonna do a video right here. It's one I get a lot of questions on. And uh, I know you hear a lot about this too. And the subject today is tribulation salvation. Tribulation salvation. Um, are people saved the same way during the seven year tribulation period as in other times? Um, let me first of all, lay some groundwork here for you, all right? But let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you by, for salvation by grace through faith in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so um, people who do not obey God's command to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, and that right division of the word of truth is what the apostle Paul calls dispensations. And um, if you don't understand dispensations, you will not understand dispensational theology. You have not rightly divided the word of truth like God says. If you're gonna study your Bible, you have to study it dispensationally or you're just not understanding anything there is. So it is proper. And uh, um, uh, uh, guys like myself, like Gene Kim, like Robert Breaker, and I could go on and on, Dr. Peter Ruckman, we are what you are, we would call Bible-believing dispensationalists. Bible-believing dispensationalists. Uh, we are not hyper-dispensationalists, okay? A hyper-dispensationalist, hyper -dispensationalist, that's somebody that uh, thinks that the body of Christ, the church, started with the Apostle Paul. That's somebody that thinks that water baptism is not for this age. That's somebody that thinks that the, that the church, the bride of Christ, is not the bride of Christ. That, the, that the, uh, the church, the body of Christ, is not the bride of Christ, that that's Israel. Uh, the uh, hyper-dispensationalists throw out uh, everything except for Romans to Philemon as far as applying to anybody a Christian saved in this age. We don't do any of that. We are not hyper-dispensationalists. We are correct, balanced, Bible-believing dispensationalists. Okay, got that out of the way. So there's some, there's some things that are different. Now, let me just say this also, right off the bat, you can go Sunday school simple and just mush it all together and just say everybody's always been saved the same way all the time and find a, find a couple little verses to kind of match what you believe and say, oh, there, see? But that's a lazy way because you've got 95% of the Bible that you can't match up to that and you can't explain it either. See, there's a difference between finding some scripture that matches what you believe and making what you believe match all of the scripture rightly divided in context. See what I'm saying? So I'm gonna try to, look, I am not as slick, as organized, nor as intelligent <laughs> as Robert Breaker, Gene Kim, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we're gonna do a penitentiary style. I'm gonna try to break this thing down real simple, not drag it out for an hour and a half. So uh, 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 bear, bear with me, we'll do the best we can by God's grace, amen. Okay, so starting off, where do we start off? We start off with Adam. I always like this right here, I can feel like a real teacher. All right, <laughs> so we start off with Adam over here, right? And Adam falls. And here's what, here's what Roman 5 says about that. Uh, Roman 5, 12 through 14 says this, oh, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned 
from Adam to Moses. Okay, so death reigned from Adam to Moses. All right, you know what that meant? Nobody went to heaven. Death reigned. Okay, so what happened? Well, from Adam to Moses, and then from Moses uh, to the cross, the righteous dead went to a place called Abraham's bosom. You can read up, uh, read up on that in Luke chapter 16. What happens, in, I'm not going to read all these scriptures because this, this video will be two hours long. So trust me, you can look them up later if you want. I wrote them down. But what happens in Luke 16? In Luke 16, Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom. The rich man goes to hell. Rich man went to hell. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. Now look, they were able to see each other. That was a great gulf. They couldn't pass over it, but they were able to see each other. Amen? So, then, why was that? Well, Hebrews 9 gives us, some, gives us a little light on that. I'm going to read out. Because something hadn't happened yet. Something hadn't happened yet. All right. Hebrews 9, 14 through 17. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Did you catch that? When Jesus died here, that's when they got their redemption. They didn't get their redemption here. They didn't get born again. They didn't even get their uh, completed salvation. They went to Abraham's bosom and waited on Christ to pay the price. And, and so they could have, have a completed salvation. This was a waiting room. Nobody in the Old Testament was born again. Nobody in the Old Testament was circumcised spiritually. Nobody in the Old Testament was joined and made one with Jesus Christ. They, he had not come yet. He had not died yet. He had not paid the price. Death reigned. Death reigned until the cross. Amen? So, he says, uh, uh, it was for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Okay? So, that's when Christ died, they received the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. See? Things were different. Things were different before he came to the cross, before he shed his blood. They don't have the same salvation in the Old Testament that we have. They got to get to Abraham's bosom. And you know how they did that? They did it by grace through faith. But theirs was a faith in something that hadn't happened yet. They couldn't receive a finished, completed salvation because he had not offered a finished, completed salvation. That's why you read in the Old Testament that if a righteous man turns away from his righteous deeds and goes back to wickedness, all his righteous deeds will not be remembered and he shall die in his sins. That, that's Old Testament salvation. That's, that's what's talked about in the book of James. It was not Abraham justified by works. See, you had to, in the Old Testament, you had to die in faith. That's all. You just had to die in faith. It was by grace and it was through faith, but it was a different kind of faith. It wasn't a faith in a finished work. It was a faith in something that was yet coming. And if you didn't have that faith in what was coming, you split hell wide open. You didn't go to Abraham's bosom. All right. That's Old Testament. Amen. So, and we saw that in Luke 16. 
that Lazarus waiting, waiting right here in Abraham's bosom. And then Jesus comes on the cross. And what does Jesus say to that crop, to the thief standing next to him, huh? The one that believed? He says, today, today thou shalt be with me. Where? In paradise. In paradise, okay? So the Lord Jesus Christ dies on the cross, right? And uh, uh, he says, he says on the cross, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. The spirit goes to the third heaven. They take his body and they lay it in a rich man's tomb. But his soul, his soul was made an offering for sin. His soul makes a subterranean journey that we read about. You can read about it over there in Peter, uh, where it says he preached unto the spirits in prison and the gospel was preached to those that were dead. Okay, and that's where he comes through here. He, he comes through and he hollers at these folks over here and tells them, hey, <laughs> it's done, I won. And then he comes over here and he says, let's go, fellas, we're out of here. The price is paid. You can go to the third heaven now. And we read about that in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter four. I'll read that. All right, Ephesians chapter four, all right? Wherefore, verse eight, Wherefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity, captive, amen, and gave gifts unto man. Now, he that ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens. Hallelujah. First and second heavens that he might fill all things. Hallelujah. So, amen. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he says, hey, no, you, you, you prisoners of hope, you that died in faith, believe in what God said, here I come, and here you go, boom, and they go to, and they go to the third heaven, we call it paradise, right? How do we know that? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Apostle so Paul made a, made a little journey there. Let's see what Paul said. Paul, stoned outside of the city, dead or close to dead. Scripture's not 100% clear on that. He said, whether I'm in the body or out of the body, I don't know. Paul didn't know. <laughs> Amen. But here's what he did know. He said, uh, he said, I, uh, I knew a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was what? Caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And look at look at verse two. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one caught up to the third heaven. So Paul tells you right there that paradise is in the third heaven. But back here, before Christ went to the cross, paradise was in Abraham's bosom down here by hell. All right, so listen, you can't make everything the same in the Old Testament and the New Testament and do justice to the Bible and be, be able to put every single scripture like a puzzle piece in its place without any contradictions unless you do it dispensationally and unless you rightly divide. Okay, so that was Old Testament salvation. Then we get over here, boom. Okay, and now we come to the church age, right? There's the church age. Boom, hallelujah. Oh man, that's the deal you and I got. That's what's been going on for 2,000 years. That's where, hey, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in that heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's like he told, he told the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. As we say in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, right? No, what? No. Chapter 15. I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses one through four. He says, uh, this is the gospel that, that we preach. That Christ died for our sins, according to scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. That's, and that's, that's, that's the good news. That, that's the gospel. It's, 
Paul said, I want to know nothing among you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. So that's it. This is the, this is the age of grace. This is the church age. Hallelujah. It began with the resurrection of its living head. Amen. Who was the first one in the body of Christ? Christ. He's its head. Duh. So uh, when once this is the this is the dividing line, but uh, with the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil of the temple is it is ripped open. There is a transitional period here with a gradual revelation of the gospel of grace. But New Testament salvation starts right here at the cross. And it lasts all the way. We go from resurrection to rapture. The church age is resurrection to rapture. The church, the body of Christ is from resurrection to rapture. Amen. And the rapture right here, that was over, that was over in 1 Corinthians 2. See? Because everything, everything having to do with this church age, with this Pauline doctrine, all of this grace by faith, all that, that was all a mystery. A mystery hid from ages and generations, but was revealed through the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking right through, to and through the Apostle Paul and gave us the revelation of the mystery of the church age right here. Bing, bang, boom. And part of that, and part of that is the rapture. Part of the mystery of the church is the rapture of the church. Uh, and that's what he says in 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 51. He says, behold, I show you a mystery. Okay. That's a mystery. A mystery is something that hasn't been revealed yet. So he's not talking about the re resurrection of the nation of, nation of Israel. He's not talking about what we're going to look at over here. He's not talking about the, the resurrection and regathering of the nation of Israel to Jerusalem at his second advent. That's not what he's talking about. This is a mystery, right? And this mystery of the rapture, that's where he comes and gets us. He comes and gets his church because the church age is over. And we're going to go back and start dealing with the nation of Israel again because God owes them seven years. On God's timetable, God's calendar, there's a time called Daniel's 70th week. It's also called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the tribulation period and that is what happens right in here. Here's your tribulation. Boom, right here. Look at tribulation. We're not appointed to wrath, the church. We're out of here. What? John 14, what does he say? I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. That's right. So he comes, he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you there you may be also. Hallelujah. So the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come down. He's going to gather his church right here. Boom. And he's going to take us to heaven where New Jerusalem is, where we got mansions. Amen. So that's what happens. And you see that picture here in Revelations 4 and 5. Okay, okay, John, John, who is what? The disciple that Jesus loved. John, who leaned on his breast at the Last Supper. John, who, when Peter asked, what shall this man do? He said, what is it to thee if he tarries till I come? John is the type of the church. And we see, and we see right here in chapter four. So after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first verb and the first voice, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must hereafter be hereafter. So John is a type of church trumpet. He's caught up. That's after all the letters to the churches. And now we're going into the tribulation period. So then when John gets up into heaven, he sees a, now he's been transported into the future and he sees a vision of the throne of God on the sea of glass. And he describes all that. 
But here's what's here's what's interesting. And uh, uh, and they and they and they bring the book with the seals to to Jesus to the Lamb. He's gonna start. He's gonna start busting busting these seals open. Right? He's getting ready to bust them seals open. But look who's already in heaven before he breaks the seals, right? And look at verse eight. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials for odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on earth. And look, the next verse, he tells you the number of them. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, hallelujah. That's, that's us. That's us, the church, taken to our heavenly home before the first seal is broken and before the tribulation begins. We're already there, okay? Now, let's look at another group of people. Once the seals start being opened, once the Antichrist and the, and the persecution comes and the mark of the beast comes, once the tribulation times, this time of wrath, once it begins, look at this other group. All right, that's uh, over here, Revelation 6 and 7. They said, and when, he, when he'd opened the fifth seal, now we into it now, brother, we into it. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. And they cried with a loud voice, and how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not avenge and avenge our blood? Because thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. We don't dwell on the earth. <laughs> and the white robes were given unto every one of them that it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Amen. So these, there are, this is a different group. We've already seen the first group, which is the church, the raptured church there before the seals. And now we've got another group well, who is described as being under the altar and were mar martyred after the seals begin to be opened. And we see them again over here when, when, with the 144,000. So look over in chapter 7. And he said, uh, 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 he's talking about, I'm going to, at verse 3, he's going to uh, uh, seal the servants of our God on their foreheads. And that's 144,000 out of each of the tribes, right? And that's, and that's all Jews, 144,000 literal Jews in the tribulation. They're going to be out doing the evangelistic work of God in the tribulation, right? Just like in the original Old Testament program, the Jews were supposed to do a job, and that job was to take the knowledge of God to a Gentile world. Now here, in Daniel's 70th week, where the Jews are getting restored to God, they're given another chance, and here this 144,000 takes the gospel to the world, to the Gentile world. The Jews are doing their job here. Amen. As they come as they come back to the Lord. And did they do a good job? Well, look at verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their, in their hands, and was skipped down and... Uh, and, and, and and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are those which are arrayed in white robes? Verse 13. And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Amen. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. Amen. Okay. What did they what what did they believe? 
Right? What, 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 what was the message that the 144,000, what was the message that they were preaching? All right? Well, look at Revelation chapter 14. Here's what's going on. Look, chapter 14, context, 144,000, amen, right there. Verses uh, one, two, and three, uh, they're the first fruits of God. And uh, look at verse six. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. Fear God and give glory to Him. Is that 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? Is that Romans 10, 9 and 8? Is that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? No. Listen, people say, people say go over there into Galatians where Paul says, if any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. What do you think? This angel is accursed? Because he's no, no. Paul's writing a church age epistle to the body of Christ in the church age. Paul is saying, during this time, the church age, to the body of Christ, if any man preach any other gospel, then Paul's gospel, let him be accursed. But listen, this is a different age. This is a different time. This is a different dispensation. And it's, a, it's obviously a different gospel. Look at verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, it ain't just the faith of Jesus. It's the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. And in the context, what's the commandment of God? During the tribulation, it's right there. Same chapter. Verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, nor who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Listen, during the tribulation period, you can worship and follow the Antichrist and get his mark and be on his side, or you can follow, you can believe on, you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can fear God, keep the commandments, give glory to him, not take the mark, and support Israel, and it'll probably, it'll probably cost you your head, but then you go to heaven with these guys, right? It's Israel, remember? These were the rest of the martyrs. You've got, you've got the rest of Israel waiting. The rest of Israel, it's just their souls. They got to go to paradise and our bodies yet, they're waiting. These guys, they're waiting. Look, we've already got raptured. We've already got our brand, our brand new bodies. We're already gone to the judgment seat of Christ. We've already gone to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah! We're already getting on our in our new bodies on our white horses, getting ready to come back and kick butt and take names with the Lord. Amen. No, he's he's doing all the kicking butt and taking names, but we're coming with him. We're hey, we're his entourage. That's for sure. Amen. So, but these guys. And these guys, they're waiting for something over here. And that's what you find in Ezekiel 37, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 14. And for time's sake, I won't read it all, but I'll just tell you, Ezekiel 37. It says, so God says to Ezekiel, son of man, this is a valley of dry bones. Can these dead bones live? And Ezekiel says, what? And God says, look, I'm going to 
This, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And I'm going to raise them all up and I'm going to put flesh on them. This is the resurrection of the nation of Israel. And he's called to the four winds. Amen. And, and the righteous Jews whose souls have been waiting, they get their body. They get their body right here when the Lord comes back and touches down Israel is resurrected. Israel is all restored back to the land, back to their land with the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of David, ruling and reigning for a thousand, for a thousand years. Amen. Just like all the prophets said he would. It was not allegorical. It was not symbolic. The church didn't replace them. Hallelujah. No, it's going to happen exactly like God said. Remember what I told you at the beginning? This is Bible believing dispensationalism. Amen. We believe exactly what this book says. We don't try to make this book match what we think. We believe what it says. Amen. So, okay. Ezekiel 37 says the same thing. That's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24. Matthew 24. He says, he said, if at the end, he's going to send his angels to gather his elect from the four corners, huh? For the, from the four winds. You know, gather his elect from the four winds. What and gather them what back to Jerusalem? They don't take them to heaven. They don't take them to New Jerusalem. The angels gather, gather them, because the souls have come back. This is this is the resurrection, the rebirth of the nation of Israel at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like all Old Testament prophecy always said would happen. And you'll see the same thing in Luke 21, same thing in Mark chapter 14. It's all about Israel. It's on the Sabbath day. Uh, it, it's in Judea. Uh, it's, they're going to pull you before the synagogues. It's, it's all Jewish related. The resurrection of Israel in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 14 have nothing to do with the rapture of the church that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This was a mystery revealed by Paul. This was Old Testament prophecy. So then, see, when we got when we got resurrected, I'll go one more place. When we got when we got raptured, excuse me, rather, when we got raptured, we got a new body. The Bible says that when we see him, we shall be like him. That he was the firstborn among many brethren. So when Jesus Christ, he came, out of, he came out of that grave with a certain kind of body. It was a certain kind of body that could travel up to heaven and back in the blink of an eye or, or less. Amen. That it could go, walk through walls. He had what you call, he said, the Bible says we are like the angels in heaven. He has a body that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. It's a different kind of flesh. We have bodies just like the risen, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. That is a special blessing of the heavenly people that is the church, the body of Christ with our home in the heavens. We have a celestial body just like Jesus Christ. But the nation of Israel and all those tribulation saints that are resurrected here on earth, they have a body terrestrial. And that body is like, is like the bodies that Adam and Eve had. And they're suited and outfitted for life on the earth. And the whole earth is given to the, to the nation of Israel with the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And, and the Jews, they run, they run the show now. They're no longer the tail. They are the head. And as far as everything they were supposed to do back in the Old Testament and didn't do, now they're going to do it. Now it's going to be the, the Jewish people taking the knowledge, the knowledge of God to the world. And uh, that's, that's what happens here. They have a terrestrial body. See, and they, they, gotta, they still have to go into New Jerusalem and they have to go to the tree of life uh, with the, the, the grows on either side of the river that flows out from before his throne and they have to get their eternal life from the, from the tree of life. We don't have to do that. We are joined. He that joined the Lord is one spirit. We, Jesus Christ is our eternal life. We don't have, we don't have to do that. We are like him in the heavenlies and, and they're terrestrial right here on the earth.
So, yes, tribulation salvation is different from Old Testament salvation because if you died in faith, if you rejected the mark, and you, hey, you and, and you fear God and give glory to Him, and you kept the command, you kept the commandments of God and had faith in Jesus Christ. If you did that and you died in faith, you got to go. You got to go here. I had to cap off too long. Let's do it because it, it's because of the blood. Let's do it in red because the blood is shed. You didn't have to go down here and wait in Abraham's bosom, right? No, tribulation saints that die in there, they go, they go straight up here. They go straight up here to heaven. So it's different, it's different in that aspect. But hey, they're not part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ, uh, during this time where all this has been happening with it, their souls under the altar. We're at the judgment seat. We're at the wedding. We've already got our bodies and we're on our way back. I don't see how I can make it any more clear than that. That's just some straight up, uh, uh, keeping it penitentiary real, simple as I can make it. But that's what the Bible says. That's a question you always have to ask yourself. I don't care what any what any Sunday school book says, what any college teacher says, what, what any doctor Bible stopper says. What you need to ask yourself about any of this kind of stuff, amen? <laughs> What do the Bible say? God bless you. We'll see you next time.